Let's see how we got to this stage. Now I have a planner made and a drive by wire throttle body adapted to the V rod motor. So we're back at it. So now we're on to the exhaust. As you can see, we've got a couple of 90s. We'll just cut them up. As you can see, there's a tiny little gap in there. So we just need to finish them a bit. And there's nothing worse though when you do a fitment like this. You spend a bit of time using the grinder and a file to get a near perfect fitment like that just to go ahead and ruin it with uh, my lack of welding skill. So <laughs> we're gonna go take it up now and then move on with the rest of the exhaust. So what we're gonna do now is add a couple of 45s. So it's gonna sit something like this. Something like that. And then another 90 off that end there up to the turbo downpipe. So let's see how it all plays out. So what we're up to now, we're gonna add this next 45 on. So this is going to clear the bearing hanger that's down here and then we have a 90 coming off the back of the turbo and then we'll do another 90 into there. In theory it should be pretty close to that anyhow. Starting to take shape now as you can see we just need to join the downpipe off the turbo to the rest of the exhaust. But the way I've designed it now is since I was going to a twin exhaust I thought I might as well try and hide as much as I can out the back. So as you can see now looking from this angle here you can't see the ugly hanger bearing and you can't see that well, I'm not too sure what you want to call it, but basically that pipe that the hanger bearing is sitting on. So there we have it, looking nice and symmetrical. So here goes the exhaust all welded up, well the downpipe side of things. So we'll leave the rest of the exhaust until later on down the track when we've decided exactly what we want to do. If we're going to run two little small resonators or what, but for now that's the downpipe done. So we're up to the plenum now and here's the rough idea I'm thinking for it done all the measurements underneath it properly so we've sort of overlaid it traced it out just so you can visually see it a bit easier so obviously we'll have some like trumpets in there and this is going to be the shape it looks a lot bigger than it really is but it's going to be using some three inch tube and obviously some flat sheet as well to make up the shape so that one there would be like that and then this one here would be roughly somewhere like this that one would go like that so pretty simple really um, so we'll cut it in half and then we'll use the sheet to make up the flat side and this volume here should be well over one and a half times the engine capacity so it should work out quite well. Bit hard trying to record this with one hand and hold this as well so here's the rough shape obviously this angle here we'll need to adjust that later because we want it to come out of the turbo parallel and then just kick up slightly instead of having this angle on too much of an angle that it drops down and then comes back up just so you want that nice flow so something like that. Hopefully that all makes sense for you. Here goes the base roughed out and these tubes here. So if you picture it like this, it's something like that. So how we're going to make up the missing void, we'll be using a bit of flat aluminium sheet and we're going to cut another radius over here. So then it tucks up nicely like that, just follows the curvature. A little bit of flatten across this way here and that should fill it up. So there we have it. As you can see this angle is probably a little bit too steep because you can see that's going to be the base of it and the drive by wire may hit the head. Plus, I think this angle is going to be too much as we mentioned before. We don't want to kink the charge pipe down and then draw it back up. So we're probably going to cut this back up on an angle like this. So it'll be more probably on an angle like that. And then it'll just be a straight parallel from the charge pipe straight up into there. But as I say, you're always better off having extra length here than cutting it too short. And then you've got to throw the whole project away. So here we have it. So I've notched the front one out. Just roughed it out for the now. We've got to split that in half anyway. So this is how it's going to roughly sit. Something like that. Obviously it's sitting a little bit high so we're going to take a lot of the bottom out. But nonetheless, gives us an idea. And we'll need to sort this angle here out. And once the drive by wire goes on, it'll be something like that. Heading down towards the compressor housing there. So as you see right here, We've got a lot more clearance so this can drop down pretty tight to about there. So it's a big significant drop and I've worked it out that it'll still be with that cut off down the bottom we're still going to roughly be around 1.5 times the volume of the motor anyway so should be um, good to go. So here goes the first three parts of the plenum all tacked up. So what we're going to do now I'm not too fussed about the fit up because this is going to get cut off here anyway. Likewise with over here so it's going to cut all that section out there cut some of this off and then we're going to add a bit of flat plate in there that's going to box in the sides and then we can weld our base onto it. 
Now that it's cut out, you can see it's starting to look like, a bit like a plenum now. So what we need to do now is make up some size. So we'll just trace out some terminal plate. That'll be that. Cut a bit more of that excess of material there off. So one of the main considerations we need to take into account is this angle out here. Reason being is we don't want heaps of different beans to make up the shape that needs to go to the turbo. So we have our charge pipe coming out of the turbo which is obviously going to be level. So then if we make this a 45 degree angle we only need one bend straight up into the throttle body. And we also need to make an adapter for the throttle body and adapter from the throttle body to the um, weld on, well not the weld on, the Wiggins style intercooler clamp. Cut out our side plates on the bandsaw so time to dress them up and then tack them into place. I've got to show what we're up to. We started linishing the welds. The welds come out really ugly. Reason being is the old earth burnt itself out, it cooked itself and snapped off so it must have just been holding on by one or two strands now and then and yeah it was cutting in and out all the time I was thinking what's up with the welder? And that's what it was. So ended up putting a new terminal on there and the welds came up through the again so yeah pity that I, I should have showed the ones that were actually good but nonetheless we've linished them off we've fused as much as we can on the inside as well so hopefully it's going to be strong enough or not and we'll soon see when it hits the dyno we've roughed out the base plate so now we can have a look at how the plenum's going to sit roughly so there we have it so we've cut some out of the bottom so it sits on more of an angle going backwards just looks a little bit nicer that way also cut some excessive material off the front so that's basically how the plenum's going to sit but obviously slightly higher once we figure out how we're going to adapt it from the plenum to the block there. So what's next? We've got a machine up an adapter to hold the dry ball wire on and then also we've got a machine up an adapter to go from the dry ball wire to the Wiggins ferrule so that'll be our next job. Here's the weld inside of the dry ball wire all done. As you can see we've got two different angles to make a smooth transition from the 54mm throttle body to the 3 inch tube and this lip here is the same thickness as our 3 inch tube we're using for the plenum. So here we have it. So all we have to do to this now is drill and tap it so we can attach it to the throttle body. So Imagine that this offcut here is the front of the plenum. It should all make sense now. Nice smooth transition into the throttle body there. So now that we know how we're going to attach it to the plenum, so this will be welded on obviously, and then we will have studs or some bolts, sorry, going through there because we'll be drilling and tapping this one. And that's how we're going to fix the new flange we need to make for the front. So our next challenge is going to be making something like this to fit there because I couldn't find any throttle body adapters for this size because the 54mm throttle body I could not find any that go to a like a Wigan style intercooler clamp so we've got to make our own one we'll make it a one piece and I'm thinking you might have to cut this off and make it an o-ring fit that will slide over top of that and then how we're going to hold it all together is through the four bolts to the back of this one so basically just sandwich it on so hopefully it all works out so just need to do a few measurements and yeah, start trying to plant something and machine it up. So what we've got to do now is part this little ring off here. Just finished machining that ring off there, put a little 45 degree chamfer on. We've got the bandsaw over there putting in the mahi, so once that's all done, cutting that billet, we can start machining the other end. So we've done the inlet side, as you can see, nice taper for a smooth transition, same size lip is that there. So all we need to do is machine the o-ring screws. I can't do that until I know what size o-ring board I can get. Locally, up from that, goes on good. On this side. Then we have the retaining ring, the sleeve goes on there. And then we have clamp. I guess what happened? I didn't measure the internal diameter of the bullet I had and I thought it was the same as this the other night but it's actually two more bigger so what does that mean? We can get the o-ring grooves, grooves deep enough so when I was I was ungrooving um, them out I was thinking I'm not running out of space sure enough measured the ID of that and yeah nah in the bin so that was a waste of two hours of machining so let's make another one so what we used was a transfer punch to get our bolt hole spacing and then we just turn it around and double check it so across this way 
centre is 84 and then this way here is I think it was 60 ish, yeah 60 so everything's landing bang on so time to drill them out all the bits and pieces all machined up o-ring grooves all drilled out drilled and tapped this one here I think that's the o-ring for that one so that o-ring there is going to go on this surface here so bolt on like that seen it assembled a million times now but you get the idea a couple o-rings go in there goes on that part there also added a bit of shape into this and we also made our spaces up that go there so should look pretty good assembled throttle body I was quite happy how all the bolt holes worked out in the end due to the type of drill I've got is old school pedestal drill and when you drill through aluminium the drill bits always wander and they just tend to go where they want to so I'm not going to say this is skill this is simply just a fluke that they actually turned out this well so this one here is a little bit tight on this hole over here but nonetheless it went in without having to elongate any holes but proof is always in the pudding and look at that alignment there's no lip around there at all so she's bang on so pretty happy with that so what we're going to do next is we're going to sort the base of the plenum out because I don't want to wreck all that machining work if I end up not being able to finish off this plenum how I want to do it so we'll give it a go ignore this is just literally roughed out as you can see just cut out the grinder so what we need to do is how we're going to decide how we're going to attach it to the motor so these go on top of the block but I'm not too sure if I'm going to run these or make new ones and just have tubes coming out of there so we'll quickly figure that out now first thoughts for this whole idea I was just going to trace out this 5mm plate and I thought no my luck by the time I weld it will probably distort and warp and carry on like that so my next thought was use a bit of this billet and if you look down here it's nearly the same size as the bore so obviously we'll just need to scallop it out because as you can see it's not a circle so that's, that's an easy fix and what I was actually thinking was say we've made the flange here then I was going to leave a little lip up there instead of trying to weld to a real thick say 5, 6, 7 mil, whatever it ends up being base I'm going to machine up a little lip here so then it's the same wall thickness as the 2 mil tube or 2 inch tube that's going on it so basically this will slide into place and then just be a nice seamless join then we, there we get rid of those clamps because they tend to leak as well especially when you're trying to put boost under them so just one way to eliminate another problem and just another fail safe setup really so yeah we'll give it a go see if we can machine something up make it happen so imagine this flange is sitting like this as you can see our ball is running through the center there so what we can so here we have it from drawing to reality here goes the tubing hopefully that makes sense now it's going to be a lot easier to weld this 2mm step here to the 2mm tube instead of going 12.5mm to 2mm so what we need to do now is shape it out so I'm going to just cut a little bit off the bare minimum because I want to keep as much of a heat soak as I can in these flanges to save, to save distortion so let's um, trim a bit off, put them on the block, see where they're sort of sitting and then yeah, start taking the whole system up. As you can see we've roughed out the flanges, they're all bolted on now, left as much material on as we can to utilise as a heat sink. So you probably can't tell through the camera but they're really offset, obviously being a V-twin motor you're obviously going to have offset inlets and if we had this, if we went the easy route and we had it lined up, that's a better example, that's how crooked it'll be roughly roughly around there that's how crooked it'll be so that pipe will come out then have to kick back in around to meet up to there so the challenge we have now is we're gonna have to if we run it straight and that's how far out that bottom hole is going to be so we're gonna have to possibly run a straight there then curve this one in or have two curves to sort of match up so yeah a bit of a challenge so this isn't this plenum ain't going to be exactly centered in the middle of the cart but I think we can't win everything with this cut. Now that we roughly know that this plenum is sitting 40mm offset, what we've done we'll put some markers down here, 40mm there and up on the seat there 40mm so we can slide this laser across, align both of them and this is going to be roughly the centre point, pretty good there, of the plenum so that's how we're going to set our centre point up for our plenum and rotate and clock the compressor housing to where it needs to be because it's quite important to get this here set up as well so we've got to go and grab a bit of 45 or oh, 90 degree bend come out across here so what we need to do is actually set up that 90 degree bend and why that's important because of the radius of that 90 it could be out here so our center line will end up shifting across this way so therefore we need to 
turn this compressor housing around and that will determine our height. So we've also got to have our height clearance as well for our drive-by wire and that will determine the height of the plenum. So hopefully that makes sense but I said it will make sense as soon as we start yeah, figuring it out. Once we know our plenum is sitting roughly 40mm offset so we'll put our centre line there, mark 40mm across, likewise with up on the seat there. It's quite important this part because we've got to clock the compressor housing where we want it due to being by the time we put a 90 degree bend on here it's going to shift our centre point completely out so therefore that's going to make a big difference in say we put our 90 degree bend on here clock it up this way and what that's going to do is change the complete height of where this is going to go up into the drive by wire so therefore this here is going to determine how high we need to make these runners so let's start figuring all this out and then start taking things into place this should make a bit more sense why it's so critical to get the heights and clock the compressor housing where we need it get our runner height sorted because as you can see currently this drive bolt the throttle body is aiming downwards so if we had the charge pipe there it'll go across down and back up to meet there so unless some excessive material on the plenum there as you can see so we can cut that off and tune that out so we can either drop swing that up or down vice versa with the runner height so therefore it comes straight out and back up in there being two flat planes this in theory should be a 45 degree angle to meet up to them roughly so here goes our runners roughly so as you can see we've got a 90 degree here cut in half basically pushed out as far as we can as for the rear it's roughly a 45 degree but it's now running parallel with the motor so that was the main thing as i say we'll never ever get it sitting bang on in the center it's just physically not possible without having some big long runners out either side so i'm pretty happy with how that's sitting it looks a lot better than it was and we're probably going to obtain the angle we need now so we'll just put that tube on the front for the now that's just to take off a lot of weight because as you can see it's not welded on and that throttle body said it was quite heavy and it kept pulling over on the tape so I say well just, it's just in a roughed out form now um, we'll start finishing up those tubes and obviously we're going to drop it down a lot lower and as you can see that's where the drive wire is going to end so we're going to be able to get our um, angles I think so hopefully it should all start working out so we're going to get our planes relatively level-ish before we weld. So what's well, 0.8, 0 0.5, so not too bad there, and this way, which is I've, I've zeroed off the cross member there, about one degree out. So once we um, do a bit of fine tuning, we should be good to go, so time to tack it up, I think. So where are the tops on now, tack those ones in there, so now we're going to pull it off and weld it all up. So there we have it, here goes our completed intake. Drive ball wires all set up for the O-rings in there, ready for the charge pipe. Or charge pipe will be as soon as we finish welding this up, but I've run out of argon gas, so hence why that's the last thing to do on the throttle body as well. I just didn't want to get halfway through here, then we run out. So that's all done, how we mounted the plenum to the manifold base plate. I actually done it on the underside, so basically I shaped that out, the plate a bit smaller than the internal diameter of that slid that over and welded from the underside that way there we don't have an exposed weld and so if I was a good welder then maybe I would have left it but I quite like that smooth look anyway took a while to shape out these flanges to accommodate that V-rod fuel rail but nonetheless we got there probably about two hours just to shape all those out and get them working around there's not much clearance at all to run this with the thicker flanges another thing we might be doing is getting rid of these factory V-rod fuel lines because we're going to use some AM fittings I know we can get some adapters but I don't like how they come out of here, they've got the kinks and stuff, they're not really flowing to how we like it. But overall, there gets our plenum. Wish I could have had it slightly lower, but as you can see, um, well, you can't see now, but once you see the charge pipe done, you'll see why I had to have it that high, but the seat comes to about there anyway, so it covers the majority of it. We've mounted the coils, machined up some little spaces down there. But overall, yeah, we're trucking along now, so not too sure what the next video is going to be. Hopefully, well, we're going to get some new get, get some gas tomorrow or whenever. Weld all that manifold out, so then we've got our that all sorted out. Make our charge pipe, and then we'll probably move on to making a fuel setup for it. So we'll make our own little fuel tank and stuff.